Welcome to this four-part tutorial series where we create this ocean scene. So the tutorial will be divided into four different chapters. The first chapter is all about the water and the waves. The second chapter is about the shader we are using for the ocean. The third chapter is for the floating object. I will show you how you can create these and in the last chapter we will create the boat controller. Here you see the wireframe model uh, so that you really see what uh, we are doing here. There are a lot of physics involved but I will keep it as simple as possible. This tutorial is inspired by you because some of you ask if I can show you how to create a boat or how you actually control a boat. Um, after I already shown you how you create a car controller. We will start with a complete empty scene and create an empty. This empty will be our waves. To create the waves we will write a script because we will create it completely from script. We call the script waves and the first thing that we do is just create a public variable called dimensions. We will set it to maybe 10 and on start we will create the mesh. To do so we will introduce two new variables called mesh filter. We will uh, name them exactly as a type protected mesh. Mesh, there we go. Maybe in capital letters. And on start we will create it. So let's shortly go through the script. The mesh name can be the same as the object name. We have to specify vertices and triangles. We calculate the bounds after it, create the mesh filter so that we actually can render it and set the just created mesh to the mesh filter. Now we need this two new uh, methods. The vertices are pretty straightforward. We will create a vector three um, therefore I have to change the dimension to dimension and um, if the dimension is 10 we want a 11 times 11 vector um, array and then we go through all the x variables so x equals 0 and we will iterate through it 10 11 times and the same with the Z axis or the Z coordinates and then we will set the vertex to X 0 Z. So therefore we have to compute the index and the index is um, just the following way. For example if X equals 0 and Z equals 0 the index will be 0. And if x equals 0 and z equals 9, for example, the index is 9. And as soon as we um, get to x equals 1 and z equals 0, then the index should be 12. Because as long as um, it's 11, the index is 11. And if we skip over so that x equals 1, the index should be 11. Okay, how do we compute that? Actually, it's pretty simple. We just say x times dimension plus 1 plus z. So now we have serialized our two-dimensional positions into one big vector. Now we have to generate the triangles here. Uh, we do the same again. We say mesh vertices length times 6. So why 6? Imagine we want some kind of these squares and therefore we need two triangles. The one here and the other one is here. And so we specify one, two, three, these edges as the first triangle and four, five, six. These uh, vertices as the second triangle and therefore we need six. Then we iterate again through all the dimensions and we say okay for the first vertice or the first 
um, triangle we multiply the index by 6 because we want the same logic for the triangles as for the vertices but we want to do always for each index 6 steps so it's for example for the 0 index is it's 0 times 6 it's 0 for example here and then we iterate through it 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and here are the actual points for example this is here this is here this is x for example if this x this is x then this is this point and we get the first triangle and the second triangle is here okay as soon as we uh, set up all the triangles we can already start our scene Back in our scene, we can add a mesh renderer to it and we need a material. So now we can first choose the default material, start the scene, and here we go. You can see in the wireframe mode, everything seems to work perfect. So now we can add waves to it. Uh, we will use the pearl and noise and apply it multiple times this is called octaves if you just overlap them and this is what we do right now so to specify an octave we will just create a serializable struct the octave should have a speed value a scale value a height and uh, we want to specify if it's alternating or not okay let's go up put it up here and then we should modify the update method and here we go so this is it uh, we first grab our vertices into this variable and then after that we put it back so this is the way you have to do it if you want to manipulate them then we again iterate through all the dimensions and set a height value for our vertices now the height value is zero so nothing will happen but let's add some code here. Okay, here we go. We will iterate through all our octaves and let's start with the alternate animation. We could do the following. So we will add a wave, cosinus wave, um, and pass the time and just multiply it by the speed magnitude of the speed vector of the octaves and multiply this by the height. And as you will notice, our plane will just go up and down. So let's just add a factor of Perl and noise to it. So Perl and noise, uh, basically it's X times Z, but we have to keep in mind that we uh, have to scale it by the scale factor and that we divide it by the dimension of the complete plane and we multiply it by pi times two um, to have a little bit a bigger plane and a bigger pearl and noise. This will smooth everything out and we just add the factor here. And this means we will everywhere have a different height based on our position X and Z. So uh, I put in one octave and the speed is one, the scale is one, the height is one. So now we should see what is happening here. And yeah, every point just goes up and down as before, but now they're depending on the position. And now we ha can uh, take the advantage of this octaves and add another one with the same values and maybe a bigger scale and a very small height, for example, yeah, five, one, or maybe even five. So now you see uh, what is happening. Um, it's a little bit too much, but now we really can see, okay, it looks different, a little bit more like an ocean. Okay, the other one. So basically it's, it's still the same. Um, instead of uh, having the cosinus, we will just use the pearl and noise here and multiply it by the height. And the time value uh, is not anymore in this cosinus um, value or function. It's up here, time. Time times speed x. And here, time 
times speed y. So you might ask why is here a y and here a z? That's because I specified the speed vector and the scale vector by a vector 2. So this is why I use y here instead of a z. And we just subtract 0.5 because this Perlin noise gives us a value between 0 and 1. And to normalize it, I would have a 0 value and a 1 value. And I don't want to have the waves um, here. If here is my base, I want to have the waves around here, so I subtract 0 0.5 sec um, units and the waves are here now. Okay, and uh, the waves also travel in one direction because they are multiplied by the time. So this x value is an x, for example, it starts at 0, but with the time it increases. So it's x is 0, after a second it's 1, after 2 seconds it's 2, and so on, if the speed is 1, for example. So now we say scale 1, speed 1, maybe only speed x1, to have the exact example I just explained to you. And we disable the alternate flag. And here you see what is happening. Uh, I will increase it. So now you see it's traveling among the x-axis. We can increase the scale, uh, maybe not 10, 3 or 2. So one thing you notice is as soon as you go into shaded mode, you can't see the waves anymore. There are no shadows. And this is because the normals are not calculated. We have to do it by hand. So in update, we just have to say, we calculate normals every time we update the vertices, but we also will do it here um, on start. The other thing is that we have to calculate the UVs. Okay, generate UVs. If you don't know what UVs are, um, it's basically just the texture mapped to the actual uh, wireframe. So for example, this is a wireframe, this is a texture. Textures have coordinates, for example, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And you have to specify for each of these vertices in this grid where the pixel should come from. And for our example, we say, okay, this pixel right here should come from here in the texture. So I draw a smiley here so that you know that it's the texture. This should come from here and this from here. And after that, you have a smiley in this vertex. So what we will do then is um, I will flip it. So here it's normal and in the next column it's flipped. So I will take this one from here and this from here. So it's always flipped. For example, if we have a black eye on the white side, the so next time the black eye is here and the white eye is here and then white eye is here, black eye is here and so on. It continues. Okay. How do we write that? Basically, we do the same as always, uh, generate UVs. We need for every vertice um, to specify which UV value does the vertex have. So we create a vector three, uh, 2 and we turn the UVs. We do the same thing as always. We iterate through all of the positions in our plane and we say, okay, um, x divided by uv scale. uv scale is a factor we have to specify here as public float uv scale. And we just take the modulo of this and then we check. So we just create a vector 2. So this I really have to explain. Imagine we have the following situation. We have x and y. Oh, z. Sorry, it's z. And x is 0, and then it's 1, and no, it's 0, and 0, and 1, and 1, and z is 0, 1, 0, 1. And maybe it goes on with 2, 0, 1. Then we take the modulo of this. Modulo 2. This gives us a 0 if z is even, and a 1 if z is uneven. So we will repeat this pattern. 
And then we can say, okay, if this is zero, then we take the number zero. And otherwise we take two minus this one. So it's basically one. And the same we do with uh, the y value so that we always alternate between every um, from every vector to the next so and this is what it looks right now you can see the shadows a little bit um, I will use two octaves a small one alternating with a high scale and a bigger one uh, with a height of one that is just floating to the x-axis uh, you can see it in the wireframe what it looks like you can see it a little bit better if I double the dimensions and the, the only question that is left for this episode is how high uh, what's the height of this point or this point or this point so we need for the physics simulation the height of ab any arbitrary point in this plane and therefore we create a method get height in our waves so this will be a little bit longer but it's very simple and straightforward the first thing is uh, we have to find out which is the scale of the plane if you use a scale of one always you are fine you do not have to deal with it but otherwise you can um, get the current scale by the property loss lossy scale and um, then you can find out the local position of the position that's going into the method so if you're dealing always with a scale of one this will be your position um, you have to just subtract the current position of the plane to get really the position within the grid and then we will calculate four points for example if we have this tile and we want to have this point then uh, we will have two axes, x and z and we will um, get the floor and the seal values of it so floor and seal and the same here with the z position floor and seal and the result are one, two, three, four different points p1 to p4 and then we will clamp them. For example, if uh, the grid continues here and here and you have a point outside of the grid, um, this is just for, for error handling. You will define, oh, it, it shouldn't be less than zero and it shouldn't be higher than the current dimension. Then we will calculate the max distance from our point to um, every edge point. So this is so this is basically um, for our example these these distances here and the maximum for example is this one and then we always calculate maximum minus actual distance so for example if this distance is 2 we will subtract it by 2 and this is 0 so this point is ignored we will only take into account the other three points and always calculate for example 2 minus 1 if this is a um, distance of 1 and 2 minus 1.5 and 2 minus 1.5 and you see uh, this is has a value of 1 so this is highest weighted and we just calculate the weighted um, height just take the vertex height multiply it by this distance value we just calculated and after the that divided by the distance is just the average of these points and then we have a good estimation of the point and this is one of the fundamentals we will use to create um, our physics based on that so that's it for the first episode i hope you liked it next time we will create a beautiful shader for our water subscribe to my channel to get more straight to the point tutorials Thank you.